like our homes, many of the devices we use also carry addresses. These addresses, which can be as simple as a telephone number, are used for creating connections, which are integral to our modern communication infrastructure. Today, in this networking lesson, we will take a look at one communication address in particular, the MAC address. Many modern devices are capable of connecting to a network. This means that even in places like a home, information is flowing back and forth through wires and over the airways. But with all this traffic, how does anything get to where it's supposed to be? Like a city that is joined together by its roads, a network is comprised of links which connect devices. But there is also another way to look at a network, and that is through the layered view. From a technical standpoint, a network can be divided into layers, seven to be precise. It starts from the application layer, which is the highest, and moves down to the physical layer, the lowest. This framework of seven layers is referred to as the OSI model. But why even bring this up in the first place? Well, each layer or level represents a unique process that the data must first go through before it is ready to be sent onto the network. A quick side note, I'm also planning to do a lesson on the IP address, and some of these layers will be talked about there. But the layer that we will mostly focus on today is the data link layer, for it is here where the MAC address functions. According to the OSI model, the data link layer represents the local network. For simplicity's sake, Let's make this the home network. Making up this local network is a network switch which the devices are connected to. For transmission beyond, the switch must also be connected to a router. At this layer, the data is transported in containers called frames. These frames are highly disposable and are discarded for new ones if the data should leave the network. So how does a frame get from its source to its destination? Well, each network switch carries a small amount of intelligence, which can read the destination MAC address of an incoming frame and determines where to send it. If the destination is a device on the local network, the frame will carry the MAC address for that device. But if the destination is for a device outside the local network, the frame will have the MAC address for the local gateway router. Here it will be sent and repackaged for the next destination. Currently, the term MAC address is considered by the IEEE as obsolete, and EUI is used instead. But within the tech culture, it is not considered an egregious thing to say MAC address. Initially, the address was 48 bits, but that has been upgraded to 64. Because no two devices should share the same address, the block is divided into two parts. The organizational unique identifier makes up the first part, and it is issued by the IEEE to manufacturers. This is done as a precaution to prevent manufacturers from accidentally issuing identical addresses. The last portion of the address is called the Network Interface Controller Specific, and it is left to be assigned by the manufacturers. There are also different types of MAC addresses and each serves a unique purpose when it is used. Let's take a look. The unicast address is the most commonly used on the network. This is how data is transmitted from one device to another. A network switch will take a unicast address from the incoming frame and compares it to a cache of MAC addresses. This is done to determine the port where the destination device is connected to. On the other hand, a multicast address is not meant for a single device, but is transmitted throughout the local network to all devices. If a device is configured for multicast, it will accept the transmission. And this finally brings us to a special kind of address known as the broadcast address. An important part to sending anything is knowing where to send it. And this is a problem that must be solved even for devices on a local network. So say computer A wants to send a message to computer B. 
Through the use of DNS, Computer A determines that the IP address of Computer B is 192.168.1.5. But as mentioned earlier, to transmit data over the local network, the data needs to be placed into a frame, and frames require MAC addresses. So how does Computer A go about determining the MAC address of Computer B? Well, this is done through a process called the Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP. Here, the broadcast MAC address is transmitted to every device within the local network, asking that the device with the IP address of 192.168.1.5 responds back with its MAC address. And this is how Computer A will get to know the MAC address of Computer B. By now, you're probably understanding why MAC addresses are so important in networking. But on the flip side, they can also become a liability. It is quite easy to scan a network and retrieve the MAC addresses of connected devices. You see, for these addresses to function properly, they have to be easily found on the network. So this makes it quite possible for someone to steal a MAC address and impersonate the device which it belongs to. The impersonation can come in the form of a man-in-the-middle attack where traffic on a network is surreptitiously redirected and viewed. Well, I hope I didn't scare you too much, but that's about it for the MAC address. Remember, it's an address that only works within the local network and is used for directing frames from one device to another. Thank you for watching.